Hello everybody, today we're going to be doing the reduction of benzophenone with sodium borohydride. So we have our benzophenone in 10 mils of methanol and we're cooling it down. We want to cool it down because the addition of sodium borohydride is exothermic. Um, when working with sodium borohydride, you'll see that it is in a jar with some dendrite because it's very moisture sensitive. Um, so when we add it, we need to add it very slowly and very meticulously. If you spill any of it, quench it with some water. If you get any on your skin or anything like that, immediately go and rinse off your hand for about five minutes. Um, you wanna make sure that your solution's cold and all of the benzophenone is dissolved before you start your addition of sodium borohydride. Alright, we've taken it off the cooling. We're going to let it react for 20 minutes. These two pieces, uh, the Wavo and the filter paper, have touched sodium borohydride. So I'm going to make sure to rinse them off with water because it could potentially be flammable. And I'm going to set up my TLC while I wait. Okay. I made my two spots now. I'm going to make a solution of my starting material. For this, we're going to need to run in uh, six to one hexanes ethyl acetate. So what I'm gonna do is add one mil of ethyl acetate, six mils of hexanes, makes the percent about like 16, 16% ethyl acetate solution. I'm going to then take about a mil or two and dissolve our starting material in the in a small test tube only need about that much might even be a little bit too much okay now we have it in our test tube I'm mixing the solution. I'm going to take some and 
try to dissolve our benzophenone. Um, this is what we're going to use to run our TLC. So I'm going to put this in a TLC jar for later and make sure that it's capped to try to keep the same solvent ratio. And looks like we are dissolved. I'm going to spot my TLC plate. Now let's go check it under the UV. I've noticed that people have been leaving these on, um, so make sure that you turn off the UV lamp right away after using it. And as we can see, our spot is pretty concentrated so hopefully that won't be too concentrated um if it is you can always run the tlc again add a little bit more solvent to dilute it so now let's go take an ir here's the ir of our starting material i'll add a picture All right, some time has passed and the bubbling has decreased a bunch. I'm gonna check the rate of the reaction. Um, so we're gonna just dip a capillary tube in here and take a TLC. Turn it off when you're done. Okay, so for this TLC, we are going to stain it, but you always want to look under UV first before you stain, because the stain is permanent. And voila, look at that. Our product has a significantly lower RF because it's the alcohol. Versus the ketone, clean, clean, clean. I don't know if you can see that. Boom, now let's go stain it. Um, I'm gonna have to find some sort of tweezer equivalent, so hold on. Okay, so for this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna dip in our TLC to the solvent line, and then we're gonna dab it off on some paper towel, and then we're gonna slowly heat um, with this hot plate. Um, I need to turn it on. Um, make sure you don't touch the TLC plate to the hot plate because the plastic will melt. Um, and here we go. That's why you use tweezers.
Now we're going to pour our reaction mixture that I notice is not bubbling into the small beaker. Um, and then we will filter it and rinse with cold water. I'm going to show you a quick and dirty way to get your product dry. Simply just dab it with a paper towel relative, with a lot of pressure and then some of the solid might be left on the paper towel but scrape it off. This might re reduce your yield a little bit but for this experiment it does not really matter. And then after you squish it, you want to chop it up and repeat till it's dry. And um, I saw some solid in the filtrate, but again, yield isn't too important here. We just want some pure product that is dry. Alright, only like 140 milligrams, but again, I did this quick and dirty. Um, if you wanted to increase the yield, I could re-filter the particles that got through into the filtrate, or sorry, the particles that got through the vacuum filter. Um, I could also skip that drying and chopping up step that I just did and just let it sit on, on the vacuum longer to dry. Um, obviously that method, you saw I lost some product. Um, but overall, this will be enough to take an IR.